Welcome to day one of your fast. I don't know where you are in your day. If you're like me, you're probably going to be hungry. I like fasting except for the fact that I get hungry. I guess that's part of it. So I want to help you understand what the Holy Spirit's trying to do in you. You know, the easy part of fasting, honestly, is to pray for your church, pray for your nation. But if you miss what God wants to do in you, this fast is not going to accomplish what you need. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is found in John 4, 1 through 42. Jesus is getting ready to have a revival in the non-Jewish world, and who he picks is astonishing. It says he must go to Samaria. I think that day Jesus must have been compelled to go to Samaria. It was a place that the Jews of that day had written off, just like the church writes off whole demographics whole spectrums of people. But Jesus never writes anyone off. Sat on Jacob's well that day. The disciples kind of hounded him to go and eat. He was just quiet, waiting. And a woman appeared. We, no later in the story, she'd had five husbands, was now living with a man, broken, abused, not trusting. And Jesus did something quite unusual for him. Instead of asking her, can I help you? He said, get me a drink. Now, why would he do that? Because in that command was a promise, and that's the way most commands work. What he was saying is, by the time I get done with you, you won't be thirsty. You'll be a drink. She said, like, how can you do this? You're a Jewish man. I'm a Samaritan. What's wrong with you? He said, listen. He said, if you knew who I was, and what I was offering you, you'd ask me for a drink because I'll give you water and you'll never thirst again. She was stunned. She said, how can I never thirst again? Give me this water. He says, if you believe in me, I'm going to create a well on the inside of you. And this well is going to release the very life of God on the inside of you, his joy, his peace. Now, the well Jesus spoke of was the new nature. You see, when I was born again, when you were born again, when we trusted in Jesus as our Savior and Lord, a lot of things happened. Yes, we got a new name, child of God, son of God, daughter of God. Um, our sins were forgiven. We had a new righteousness, but we also had a new nature. What I mean by that is the Holy Spirit of God basically was reunited with your human spirit. You see, when Adam and Eve fell, our spirits were separated from God's spirit. But when we're born again, all of a sudden, the spirit of God is reunited with our spirit, enabling the power and the life and the joy and the peace of the Trinity to flow into us. Now, how does this work? The metaphor in John 4, as you'll see in this devotional, is the word drink. But it's really a metaphor for the spiritual disciplines. What Jesus is saying is, is Every time we pray, every time we worship, every time we hear a message, when we hear a podcast, when we're fellowshipping with God, waiting on God, meditating on Scripture, all of a sudden, the very life and grace of God flows into us. Now, let me give you an analogy. Um, many of you come from countries where you have um, running water in your home. Now, I've lived in a country where that's not the case. Some of you do as well. But if you live in a country where you have running water, what you find is you have a faucet. And every time you turn that faucet or press that button or press that lever, water comes out. Now, the fact of it is, every time we pray, every time we worship, every time we wait on God, every time we meditate on the Word, it's like turning that faucet. And what happens? The very waters of God flow out. In the book of Revelation, we find the river of God flows out of the throne of God. And the unique thing is, every time we approach God, that living water of heaven flows into us. Now, if you don't have running water, the better analogy is, you, your bucket is the spiritual disciplines. And whether you get your water from a river or from a stream or from a truck that comes down your street, I've seen it all and lived where that's the case, um, that's what happens. So the purpose of today is I want to help you receive the life of God through your 
new nature. So I want you to meditate on John 4, uh, 23 through 24. And as you read this scripture, and as you look at Revelation 22, 1 and 2, I want you to ask God to open up your new nature. I want you to ask God for his life to flood into you. Now, let me remind you to pray for your pastor and his family today, to pray for your church. And on page 27, you'll find the six regions of the every nation world. Pray for one of them today. Ask God to work. And don't forget, ask the Holy Spirit to target that area of resistance in you. What's been troubling you? What's been hurting you? Now, the next four days, I'm going to be very specific in how we can apply the power of God through our new nature, through the Word, and through the Spirit. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for my spiritual family in scores of nations around the world. Uh, Lord, it is such a privilege to be family with them. Lord, you know what they're facing in their countries, in their regions. Lord, some of them find themselves in nations in desperate situations today. Some of them are facing deep economic pain. Others, Lord, are wrestling over a loved one. Some have health challenges. And Lord, I want to thank you that every time we worship you, every time we wait on you, every time we pray, your life, your grace floods into us. You told that broken woman, just drink. Lord, it's really a synonym for the word worship. Every time we worship you through the word and through prayer and through waiting on you, you meet us. I'm asking, Lord, today as we fast, as we set aside time to draw close to you, that you would flood us, Lord, with your peace. You would flood us with your joy. You would flood us with your life. Amen. Thank you very much. Have a great day on your fast.